Hi everyone. Um, it's talk about art day and it's our last talk about art day of the year. And that feels very strange to me. Um, I wanted to talk about what this class has been about the whole time. Um, it's been about you, you as an artist, as an activist, as a human being. And this is kind of a weird time between a global pandemic, police violence, and it's really difficult to know what to say and how to say goodbye to you guys. Um, but I am going to pick up from our last video because I think the things we're talking about today are actually helpful, um, kind of dealing with everything in a bigger picture. Um, Kehinde Wiley, here he is, was born in um, South Central Los Angeles. He is a Nigerian American and when he looked at artwork he didn't see people who look like him. He didn't have representation so he made it and he would spend time in his neighborhoods. He also spent a lot of time in Harlem um, where he lives currently and he would meet people on the street that he thought were interesting and he asked if they'd like to model for him and they would wear their normal clothes and they would then be posed in these very traditional Renaissance um, poses, kind of silly poses, because um, he took contemporary people, real human beings, and made them into kings. But I want to talk about presidential portraits really quickly because um, they're all kind of the same. And let's look at a couple of them. Presidential portraits all seem to have a lot of things in common. They are standing, they are in a grand room, they're dressed very professionally, and they all kind of look stiff and unnatural. They feel maybe a little uncomfortable, maybe angry, but they're going for powerful, and I get that. They want to project power and regalness. I don't know if that's a word. Um, and they all kind of look exactly the same. After a while, these presidential portraits all kind of start to look the same. And Barack Obama wanted something that was different because he was different. And he wanted to choose an artist that could capture him, capture the first president that looked nothing like any of the ones that came before him. He chose Kehinde Wiley, and I think he made a really great choice. Um, Kehinde Wiley was the first African-American to paint um, a presidential portrait for the portrait gallery. And um, here it is. I love this painting. I think it's gorgeous, but it is not regal. It does not look like the other presidential portraits. He's sitting down. He's exhausted. There's concern on his face. He's not even wearing a tie. He is sitting in front of a wall of flowers. And a lot of people had problems with that. But the wall of flowers is so important because there are three different flowers. One is a chrysanthemum, <laughs> and it is the official flower of Chicago. Um, two is the jasmine flower, and that is representation of, represents Hawaii, where he grew up or spent most of his childhood. And lastly, the African blue lily, which was um, in honor of his late father, who was Kenyan and it's beautiful. Michelle Obama also made a very good choice. She chose an artist named Amy Sherald, and Amy Sherald at the time was working as a waitress to make ends meet, and this was a very big deal for Amy, and she did a beautiful job. Here's the painting. I think this painting is beautiful. It is definitely not like any of the other First Lady's paintings. It is colorful, and it is she's sitting down. She's wearing a dress that only cost $600. And I know $600 might seem like a lot of money, right? But this is not an everyday outfit. This is a very special outfit. And most of the first ladies wore outfits for their portraits that cost multiple thousands of dollars. In fact, one first lady um, wore an outfit, not for a portrait, just for, you know, random day, a $51,000 outfit. So $600, is nothing. Some people might spend that on a prom dress, so it's pretty impressive. She also chose a really um, young, um, up-and-coming designer, and I'll link everything below. 
but the design was a patchwork quilt inspired um, pattern on the beautiful dress, which is inspired by uh, black communities where um, quilting and patchwork was very, very common. Now let's look at them side by side. Most people did not like these portraits. There was an unbelievable amount of backlash. Um, even the White House currently, the website, is only um, is showing all of the portraits up till um, Barack uh, and Michelle's portrait, and then they just have a photo of them instead of the painting. Um, but for some people, these paintings were the first times they saw themselves in leadership. They saw themselves in historical figures, in paintings, on gallery walls. Um, and there's a really special little girl that I want to introduce you guys to, and here's a picture of her. She is standing in front of Michelle Obama's portrait in the National Gallery, and she is in awe. Her mom tried to move her, and she would not budge. All she wanted to do was look at Michelle Obama's portrait, and um, it was pretty special. This little girl was in awe. She saw representation of herself. She saw the first lady of the United States that looked like her, and she was so excited. She got to dance with the first lady, and now there's even a book about her. It's pretty special. Every time I see this photo of this little girl, I am reminded about why I teach. I wanna teach because I wanna give you a voice. I want to make sure that you all feel represented because representation matters so much now more than ever. And when it comes to representing yourself, sadly, it's not something we can wait for. You have to find your voice as an artist. You have to use You have to use it so other people can look to you and see someone like them that are creating, that are nurturing, that are challenging this world. That's what I want to leave with you guys, leave you guys with. Your voice matters. Your art matters. The world needs you to be an artist. And I don't mean you have to draw or paint. You can if you want, but that doesn't have to be all you are. But it means you have to speak up and represent yourself and create. I am so proud of all of you in this very, very difficult time. You made it through. And I am sure that all of you have an amazing story to tell. And I am here to listen. We are all here to listen. I am going to miss you guys like crazy. And next year, please come to my classroom. Please show me your artwork. Please keep creating. Whatever it is, please create. I miss you guys like crazy. I love you all. Bye.